Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the video. Welcome to my garage. In this video, we're going to be installing limiting straps on the back of Ratchet. So Ratchet here is getting pretty close to getting to the point where I can take it down, do a bunch of welding on it, and then reassemble it as a roller because I'll be finishing the rear suspension. So the one, one thing I wanted to finish before I actually do that was I wanted to install the, the limiting strap on the rear suspension here. And you can see I've already done this side, but I still have to do the other side. And because I was kind of in a little bit of a hurry, I was kind of almost going to crap it in, or at least not put as much energy into it as I should have. But luckily, I kind of caught myself, because I was just going to run some angle brackets and uh, put this piece through the angle bracket, and then just run it down here. And, and all of that stuff would have worked, but remember, I'm trying to make this really, really nice and something that I'm really, really proud of. So. I actually grinded my brain on it for a bit and I came up with this design which I think is really nice. I think it's really clean, elegant looking and I think it's going to work really well because it's right in line with the coil carrier right where it's going to be yanking on that strap the most. But either way, let's go to the other side over here and actually fabricate this one and then we can talk about its good points and bad points once it's done. So I've got the lower control arm bolted on here. I've got the coil carrier. I don't need the coil on there or anything. I know these parts fit because I I tried this. I already built this on the other side. The coil carrier is basically just holding the lower control arm where it's going to be. So I've got this piece. This is going to get welded onto the bottom of the control arm there. And this is basically just a piece of rectangular stock that I chopped on an angle. And then I wrapped this side and around the bottom here with some eighth inch and I purposely went past this so that it's not just I always consider if I would have just welded this on I consider that like a two-dimensional weld if it has a a third piece that's coming into a third dimension I, I like that a lot better because it's it's more of a I don't know a three-dimensional weld whereas if I just welded around here that would essentially just be on one surface or I, I think of that as two dimensions. And then this piece on the on the outside here is three sixteenths just so that it's it's nice got something nice and thick for the strap to actually bolt to. And then this will just get welded onto here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna MIG weld up the sides and across the top, and then I'm just gonna TIG weld this piece across the bottom. And that is all set up, ready to go. So I'm gonna bust all this stuff down, take this over to the table, weld it up and then we can move on to the top. All right, now I've got the bracket down here all welded in, ready to go. Lower control arm is put back in place and it is at full droop. Now we need to figure out where we're gonna drill our hole through here for our um, limiting strap adjuster. So I have this piece, which is gonna be my top plate. And the reason I'm gonna do that is just to add some more strength through here, since I will be putting a big hole in here. And uh, this is this is inch and three quarters DOM, and this is just ERW, so this should help strengthen it up. And then this is a piece of chromoly tubing that's got a half inch inside diameter. This will go into there. This piece will actually be the piece that goes through the tube, and then obviously this piece will go through there. So this is roughly what the assembly is going to be. And one thing that's nice about this piece is you'll see when I drill the hole through here and I, I line this up with the tab on the bottom, the hole is actually going to get a little bit sloppy so I can get perfect alignment. 
and then I'll be able to slide this over the top of it and it'll give me a real nice clean piece to weld to and it'll look really nice. So for starters, I'm just going to put this on here. I'm just going to use this block as a spacer only because it's the same block I used on the other side just to keep the distance the same. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it going straight through to the tab on the bottom side. And then I'm going to mark that. And then I'm just going to guess that center line there. And that looks, I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to center punch it because it would be really difficult to try to drill onto the top of a round tube. Now I'm going to drill through the first layer just with a real small bit. This is like an eighth inch bit. Now when I drilled that, I actually got nervous that it wasn't going to match the other side. I don't know why, I just I just get like that sometimes. So I'm going to double check. I'm, I'm actually three inches off the tube there, and if I measure the other side, it's three inches. So it's it's good. The block the block worked. It got me in the same location as on the other side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same drill with the, the small eighth inch drill bit, and I'm going to drill through this hole, and I'm just going to visually try to line it up with the tab down on the lower control arm because I want this link to be in a perfectly straight line down to the lower tab so that it doesn't have stress on the side. I want the stress just to be pulling directly down on this. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm guessing at this point, but it looks pretty good. So right now I've got a little eighth inch hole in here, but I actually have to hog this out to, I believe this is a three quarter inch hole in order for this piece to slip through it. So the best tool for that I think is the unibit. So I'm gonna hog this through the top and then flip it over and hog this through the bottom. And then we'll see how this lines up. So now I've drilled the hole through. I've got a big old hole here on the top and a big old hole there on the bottom. I got metal filings all over in the carpet here. You can see there's some metal filings in the tube. There's metal, fi there's metal filings all over the place, which is making me crazy. I can't stand little messes like that. Some of you guys have asked how the shop is so clean. It's because I absolutely, my OCD kicks in hard on stuff like that. So I'm going to grab the vacuum over there and clean all this up. And then we'll set up a little jig to run from the tab down there up through the hole so that we can square up the little piece of tubing. All right, so now I've got this piece of half inch aluminum stock. It's half inch outside diameter. And this is half inch inside diameter. So this fits pretty snugly over that. So what I'm gonna do is take this piece of aluminum and I'm gonna run it through the hole and I'm gonna run it down to the tab where the limiting strap is gonna uh, tie onto and I'm going to clamp it down here at the bottom and then essentially this is drawing a perfectly straight line from this tube down to the tab then I've got the tube here that the uh, limiting strap connector link whatever you want to call it is going to go through so, so then I take this slide it over that go through my hole you can see how big and ugly this top hole is I had to do that because my 
my pilot hole going through was close, but it, it's not perfect. So I had, you know, that's why I made that hole bigger. But then when I take uh, this, this half moon piece of inch and three quarter and throw it on top, clamp all that stuff into place. Now this aluminum rod is holding this tube perfectly in line with where the strap is going to connect on the bottom. So when I weld all this up and put that link in there, when the limiting strap pulls on it, it's going to pull this thing perfectly straight. There won't be any side tension or anything like that which would fatigue this over time. It'll pull it down nice and straight and it'll, it'll look good. There's the squeaker toy again. So now I'm just going to check a couple of dimensions on here and then I'm, I'm gonna pull out the MIG welder. I'm just gonna do a couple of teeny tiny tacks on this to hold it in place. I'll actually weld this with the TIG welder because all this is um, kind of tight tolerance type stuff and I want it to be real nice. I don't wanna just booger it all up with the MIG welder. But I'm just gonna throw a couple tacks on here to hold it in place. Now I got that thing lightly tacked in there. Remember, I'm, I'm gonna try to TIG this when I do the chassis. And if you, see if I can get you guys in there. If you look down through there, straight on through, that's the tab for the other end of the limiting strap. So because we tacked that in place with that aluminum tube running through there, this is perfectly in line with that lower tab, which is really cool. It's just, it's gonna look good. I think this looks good and it at least puts physics on our side. I always say to myself, the more things that you can build with physics on your side, the, the better off your chassis is going to be. So let's, uh, let me bolt this stuff in place and we'll see how it looks. I didn't make it double shear down here because I might run two limiting straps, I'm not sure. And uh, even if I just run the one, because I'm not actually gonna be like running the Baja 500 with this thing, I don't think I'll have the rebound set on these shocks so loose that it's, it's dropping so hard that it's like really stressing out these straps. All right, now I got both sides installed here. She is good to go. I mean, not really, she's just lightly tacked in place, but good to go as far as installing the limiting straps. I like this setup because it ties into the lower control arm basically as close as it can where the coil carrier connects. If it was connected over here, then as it came down, there would be a little bit of a, a torque on the lower control arm. I really don't think that would be a problem for the lower control arm, but again, the more you can stack physics in your favor, the better off you're gonna be. So this runs it really close. The connection point of the coil carrier and the limiting strap are very close, so there's not gonna be a lot of torque twist between those two. And then it's, it's pretty straight for the limiting strap, which makes life easier for the limiting strap. And then like I said at the beginning of the video, I was kind of coming up with just quick ways to do this. I was kind of in a hurry because I'm I'm excited to start tearing the chassis apart to final weld it. And I just kind of caught myself and slowed myself down and, and came up with this idea. I'm glad I took a little bit of extra time to actually make this to what me is, is just, I mean, I hate to say elegant because it's an off-road chassis, but I do feel like it's elegant. I think it's nice and I really like the way that all this suspension is coming together and now doing this I think it just it ties everything in really well so <laughs> that's enough enough ridiculous talk about suspension that's it for this video guys I hope it's helping you with whatever you're working on I hope you enjoyed watching it 
Thanks for watching it, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.